ground. But what if you should find yourself sitting on the sidelines all alone with no place to go? Well, we found a lady who'd be glad to have you over. You can come that way. If there's any extra, you're welcome to it. Well, what about the rest of the folks out there? And them too. If they can bring a lot more if we don't have enough. <laughs> all right. I'll meet you at Norma Jean's. David Henry, Action News 8, East Haven. You notice we didn't tell anybody her name. Hey, good. <laughs> if you didn't get all your shopping done yet, though, don't worry. You can still do it this weekend. Yeah, there are places open, but of course, a number of businesses are not going to be open because of the holiday. All the banks and the post offices are going to be closed on Monday. Federal, state, and local offices will also be shutting their doors for the holiday, along with schools and the stock market, the motor vehicles department, and package stores will be closed on Monday. But you will be able to shop at both supermarket and department stores in most cases. And if you're planning to take a trip by bus or train this holiday, remember that they'll all be running on a holiday schedule. Janet? And turning to another holiday item, Trumbull police say they have made one of the largest seizures of explosives and fireworks in Connecticut history. Peter Dench reports the items range from M80s to rocket launchers. I was really shocked. I never think he had that kind of fireworks in the house. Neighbor Andrew Critella is talking about what Trumbull police say they seized at this home. 335 cases of explosives and fireworks worth up to $100,000. Police say they range from dynamite-like quarter and half sticks to skyrockets, from fireworks wheels to Roman candles and rocket launchers, items that can hurt a lot of people. Police say they were actually tipped with this story by the suspect, Sanford Coover. They say he called them about some suspicious activity in his yard. And when police got here, they say they found four U's stealing fireworks from his truck. The four U's, aged 16 to 18, are all students at Trumbull High School. They were charged with possessing fireworks, a misdemeanor. Cooper was charged with possessing explosives, a felony. They were apparently just taking it without the owner's permission. It appeared so at, at that particular point. Trouble police call this a major seizure. I just feel that it's going to be a, a safer and, uh, and quieter holiday uh, as a result of uh, the work of these officers. Well, the message is that they're illegal to start with and they're also dangerous. Police say this is part of a major distribution operation in Fairfield County. Neighbors are happy that it was apparently stopped. I think it's safer in our respects for kids, adults, animals, and everybody else. At a Trumbull High School, some students called for more awareness on the dangers of explosives. If they're not, they could injure themselves, but worse than that, they could injure others. Police tell us possessing explosives is a very serious offense. It can mean up to a $10,000 fine and or 10 years in jail. Peter Dench, Action News 8, Trumbull. Well, prime suspect Sanford Cooper was not available for comment. He has been released on a $5,000 bond and faces a court appearance on June 2nd. The four students were released on a written promise to appear in court. Still to come on Action News tonight, veterans of the Great War meet to share old times. We'll take you there. And students at Amity High School thank their teachers in a big way. We'll have that next, too. It is news of interest for Woodbury, Chester, and all of Connecticut, and it's coming up on WTNH 8 Action News. Now, dear ladies, this is my secret for the most exciting Italian dressing. I got my own secret. You see, nobody but the Fredo starts with the season oil. Wrong. Uh -oh. And nobody but the Fredo adds the finest herbs and spices. Wrong. This is exciting flavor, and we call it Viva. I call it the Bravo Fredo. Read my lips, Freddy. Seven Seas, Viva Italian. Oh, everybody's going to love it. We already do. Seven Seas dressings, the great wave of flavor. If you were your car and you needed a new muffler, you wouldn't go just anywhere. You'd go to Speedy. Speedy gives you a free estimate, expert work, and the Speedy guarantee. Try finding a better deal. For a great price, get yourself over to Speedy. Right now, Speedy saves you 25% on all mufflers. That's right, you get 25% off all mufflers. Now, at Speedy Muffler King. Here's the lowest annual percentage rate financing ever in the history of GMAC. Low GMAC 5.9% financing on new GMC S15 pickup trucks. 
tough construction, a 2.5 liter engine, and 5.9%. Plus, you could win trips, boats, GMC trucks, and more in the GMC Truck Great Escape Sweepstakes. And check out the GMC S15 pickup trucks with 5.9%. Length of finance contract is limited. See your GMC truck dealer now. Friday on the next drive-in movie. Listen, I didn't kill your sister. Oh, no. You and your stupid track team. Some of the senior track stars from Midville High will not be graduating. No more pencils, no more books. How many of us were supposed to make it through the season alive? No more students at Midville High. It's a very scary graduation day on Friday night at 11.30 on the next WTNH Channel 8 drive-in movie. The man whose vision it was to transform a 19th century mill into a modern apartment complex says he will rebuild. John Carter's dream went up in flames yesterday in the most spectacular fire in East Windsor history. Steve Shaw has the story. It will probably smolder throughout the weekend, so movers packed up what they could from the few offices relatively untouched by yesterday's fire. One belonged to attorney James Testa, who used to own the old mill. For all intents and purposes, I'm all done because there's no electricity, no phone service. I may have to uh, operate from my home until I'm ready to move into the business I'm, uh, building I'm going to buy. So you were planning to move, and the fire just coincidentally yes, came... Hasten the, uh, hasten the exodus. It started by accident, according to the local fire marshal, a construction worker helping to convert the Broadbrook Mill into an apartment and office complex cut into a heating pipe, causing the explosion and fire. Today, many who worked here over the past half century came back for a final look. Fred Muska remembers the old oil-soaked floors. We were just talking about it, that if the place was all built in the, you know, with apartments and people living in there, if they ever started a fire, God help them. I don't know if they'd ever got out. They came from Germany, Ireland, Italy. They came and they settled in Broadbrook, starting back around the middle 1800s, and they have lost somebody that was very close to them, and it's something that they figure can't be replaced. But it can be rebuilt, and owner John Cotter says he'll try. I've been working on it for one solid year now, and I knew what the end product was going to be. No one else could see that. I had a vision in my mind, and uh, I'll have to create a new vision, I think. So they will rebuild, but as John Cotter says, his vision is gone forever. The stone, the rubble, the memories, all that remain. I'm Steve Shaw, Action News 8, East Windsor. And no damage estimates are available yet, but Cotter reportedly bought that mill building for a million dollars last year. Janet? Well, thoughts of booming cannons and life in the trenches were on the minds of some World War I veterans who met for a special lunch in Guilford today. The average age of the crowd, about 85, and all were affiliated with the East Shore Barracks during the Great War. 90-year-old George Dunbar served as a Navy pharmacist. Well, we, we, we're trying to develop a new series of uh, uh, serum for those that were t uh, taken with flu like that, and that's what we worked on. As soon as they came down to the place, we took care of them and, uh, as I say, opened them up and looking for serums. Mary Gillis was one of just 10,000 women who served. When I first enlisted, I was in the enrolling office, and the captain there said, can you type? And I said, yes, and he said, sit down. <laughs> well, members of the group say they enjoy reliving old times at the twice yearly reunions they meet before Memorial Day and before Veterans Day every year. There's some junior high school students making news, uh, students who really appreciate their teachers, apparently, so much so that they got a billboard to tell the whole state all about it. It's out there on Route 34 in Orange, Amity Junior High Teachers, we appreciate you, and you can see it's signed, Your Students. Needless to say, the sign has shocked many teachers. I saw the sign. I was absolutely overwhelmed almost broken to tears because I've lived and taught in a community that has supported education. They have supported it through board meetings. They have supported it in my curriculum. And then to see it <laughs> on a sign, I was overwhelmed. The idea came from a magazine. Gannett Outdoor Advertising donated the space, and the students paid about $200 for labor and material. But they say it was all worth it. We really mean it. Um, the whole student council, the whole school really supported this. It wasn't just like a couple people wanted to do it. The whole entire school, we all voted on it, and everybody was in favor of doing that for them. You bet we appreciate them. We're not doing it just for a show. So we you really, really care do. about them. Yeah, they're special. Yeah, they really are. The billboard's going to stay up there till the end of June, so even when school's out for a little while longer, that appreciation will be certainly noticed. 
What a great feeling to yeah. drive by and see that. They yeah. must feel super, and they should. That's very, very nice. I never had a teacher to do that to, though I had some thoughts about <laughs> Mademoiselle Gobstein, the French teacher who flunked me, but that was what would you many have years said on ago. That side? Yeah, I can't. Well, <laughs> we can't say what I could have said because now that I'm older, I can be sued. Let's talk about the weekend. Well, you need suntan lotion. Well, take a look at New Haven Harbor Live, and I'll be back with the AccuWeather forecast in just a minute, including the boaters' forecast, so don't go away. Hey, Roy Rogers asked me to talk to you about this great little deal they have. Hit the film, bud! Get a load of this. You can get a bacon cheeseburger, medium French fries, and a 15-ounce Coke. All for just $2.79. How about you try one of these great Roy Rogers hamburger deals today and let me know how you think they do that? You and me, we could be driving big fancy cars. We could figure out how they do that. Nissan buyers, from up here, you can't tell how many Nissans Stephen has, but down here you can. Over 200 Nissan cars and trucks with additional shipments on the way. The faster Stephen sells them, the sooner they'll get more. So Stephen is really dealing with big discounts like Nissan Sentra, 5786, 300ZX, 15956, 4.8 financing, bigger selection, super deals, any way you view it. Your best Nissan buy, Stephen's World of Wheels, Route 6 Bristol. Once there was a boy from a faraway place who landed in Connecticut. He discovered a communications network. Southern New England Telephone. That makes it easy to talk to people all over the state with low daytime rates that are even lower evenings and weekends. Which is why in Connecticut, hellos are goodbyes. Hello. You're about to witness a natural disaster. Rain. It seeps into wood, and that can cause mildew, or worse. You need Cuprinol stain and wood preservative. In laboratory tests, Cuprinol kept water beating up and rolling off twice as long as our leading competitors, Cabot and Olympic. Get twice the beating power with Cuprinol when it's wood against weather. At Meineke oh, Discount right. Properties... I'm not going to pay a lot for this muffler. You're not going to pay a lot because Meineke's muffler prices start from 1893 installed. Jeff Hawks here now to talk about the holiday weather. And who knows, maybe if it's uh, nice enough this weekend, somebody will put up a billboard saying thanks to Jeff. Oh, that's a good idea. That, that would be, be a good, good idea, yeah. You'd like that, huh? I like that. I'm <laughs> thinking about that. There's some uh, pretty bad thunderstorms around the state right now. Oh. We had some heavy ones buzz through the uh, Hartford area. That's Windsor Locks had a heavy thunderstorm last hour. That's not good for hour. driving, is it? It is not good at all. And right now in Waterbury, there are some heavy thunderstorms. And uh, it's my understanding that there has been some hail reported, some real tiny hail. But hail nonetheless. Uh, I have the radar all warmed up. We'll show you that in a second. Right now on the coast, 71, 74 inland, dew point in the 50s, relative humidity in the 50s. Steady barometer went out of the southwest at 12 on the coast, out of the north at 12. In inland sections, I spoke to Barbara O'Malley about an hour ago in East Windsor. She was having a thunderstorm that was going through. Uh, you may see one before the night is out where you are. Can I? One more, one more little thunder and lightning. I, I love the way you can do that with this machine. There it is. That's great. Okay. <laughs> Temperatures in the 70s for the most part in the state, except for Groton, New London, which right now is checking in with 80 degrees. Uh, you'll notice the temperature has fallen up in the Springfield area where a thunderstorm went through. They were in the mid-70s earlier today. Here's Barbara O'Malley, 62 degrees after that thunderstorm. She says the lightning doesn't scare her. It's the thunder. However, it is the lightning that you have to be worried about. So uh, obviously you don't want to use small appliances or stay on the phone or do things like that. Stand under trees if uh, thunder and lightning is coming through your area. Also, we've got uh, Rocky Mariano in New Haven, who's a weather watcher today. 70 degrees from Rocky. Rocky's name is Rocky. Rocky's son's name is Rocky. So it's like a Sylvester Stallone movie. They have Rocky 1 and Rocky 2 at the house. Anyway, a warm, beautiful day in New Haven and 70 degrees from the Rockies. Uh, on the weather satellite, you can see clouds over most of New England, though the shoreline of Connecticut managed to stay pretty nice most of the day. However, as more of this cloudiness moves in from the west, I am not looking for a gorgeous day tomorrow. Probably more clouds than sun. Off to our east, the heavy thunderstorms that went through uh, the northern part of the state a little while ago. And still to come, this line of showers and thunder showers. This is the one that sort of extends into the Waterbury area. This is all moving out to the east, so uh, we could have one or two more thunderstorms before the night is over. But most people will not see thunder 
Most people will just know people who, who uh, not see thunder, hear thunder. Most people will know people who hear thunder. You, you get the basic drift of where I'm going with this. Here's uh, the thunder that's moving through the east. We have printed transcripts available for those who don't get it, and some scattered thunderstorms through the south. Let me show you what's coming up for the weekend. This low pressure system that's been affecting us starts moving up and off. Finally, there will be rain through northern New England, and certainly if you want to go to Cape Cod or Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket, bring the slicker with you. It will be uh, gloomy and rainy out there. But for us, just clouds and some breaks of sunshine. And as the low continues to move up and off the map, we'll see more and more breaks of sun into the weekend. However, as we head toward Monday, this low pressure system will start moving in toward our area. So I'm not looking for any wonderfully bright, sunny skies, but I think about 95% of the weekend is going to be dry. The temperatures will be comfortable. It's not going to be an incredible weekend, but it won't be too bad in the 70s tomorrow. Let's take a look at the AccuWeather forecast now for Connecticut and all of southern New England. For tonight, partly cloudy, widely scattered thunderstorms, mid-50s, light and variable winds for tomorrow. Periods of clouds and sun, just the slightest risk of a thunderstorm, or a shower, I should say, 70 to 75 northwest winds tomorrow. Then on Sunday, we will look again for clouds and sun and just the slight chance of a thunder shower or a shower, 70 to 75. Monday, that's Memorial Day. Clouds and sun, 70 to 75, partly sunny on Tuesday and Wednesday. Temps in the 70s. And the boaters forecast, winds out of the northwest 7 to 14, waves 1 to 2, visibility 4 to 6, don't fall in, 58 is very, very chilly. Whoa. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Jeff, yeah, you, you too. too. Well, there's still a lot more ahead on Action News. Giving birth is difficult for any parent, but it's even trickier when both mom and dad are deaf and can't communicate with doctors. We'll have that story. Also, okay. Hands Across America is set for this Sunday. Lots of Connecticut people will be taking part. Dr. Dean Adele will have a word of advice about tiny batteries. Medical journals are filled with reports of toddlers swallowing those bright buttons. And as this x-ray shows, they can become lodged in the esophagus. Mm. News of interest for Branford, Eastford, and all of Connecticut. Coming up on WTNH 8, Action News. This Memorial Day weekend, come to Connecticut's biggest appliance, TV, and furniture sale at Halleck. It's worth a trip from anywhere. Prices have been slashed on appliances, TV, and furniture for this special weekend sale. Halleck gives you free delivery anywhere in Connecticut and gentle payment plans, too. Celebrate Memorial Day weekend at Halleck in New Haven, Brantford, Hamden, and Westville. Halleck. It's worth a trip from anywhere. Got a problem with weeds? Pulling won't solve it. Because where there's a root, there's sure to be a weed. Improved Cleanup Grass and Weed Killer from Ortho solves the problem. Cleanup wipes out weeds, roots and all, twice as fast as before. Because Cleanup now has two weed killers instead of one. It's perfect for patios, gardens, wherever weeds pop up. Improved Cleanup kills weeds twice as fast. Ortho works wonders. Toyota's biggest sales event. There are factory to dealer incentives on selected trucks, and you'll save on extra value package trucks and cargo vans, too. This place is jumping. Toyota's jumping. We've got the deals on your favorite wheels, because now the place is jumping. Hamburger places think it's a snap to make chicken nuggets. But when it comes to doing chicken right, they're just going around in circles. At Kentucky Fried Chicken, making great tasting chicken is all we do. Our nuggets are made with our secret blend of 11 herbs and spices, and they taste great. So for nuggets done right, come to the chicken experts. Anyone else is just along for the ride. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. This next story is an inspiration to parents everywhere. A North Haven couple has embarked on the challenge of parenthood with what many people consider a serious handicap. But as David Henry tells us, they don't see it that way at all. Stephen and Dana Ritchie are just like any other new parents, proud as can be of their newborn son, Daniel. But there is one difference. When Daniel cries, this is what they hear. Stephen and Dana Ritchie are deaf. Stephen lost his hearing at the age of three and is able to talk. Dana was born deaf. 
While most parents find they have their hands full with a new baby, the Richies feel they won't have any special problems raising Daniel. He was born yesterday, and today they found out he's able to hear. We asked how Stephen felt when he was told the news. Oh, Papa, I'm happy. I'm very proud of if they become tough. Obviously, the Richies don't think of themselves as handicapped, and they believe their son can overcome similar adversity. I was very excited, and I was happy because I felt that he could help me. Dana says Daniel will be able to do things like tell her when the doorbell rings. The baby's our Harry. The Richies had some help in the delivery room. Deidre Robinson is an interpreter supplied by the State Commission for the Deaf and Hearing Impaired. Yes, exactly. She passed information between Dana and the doctors here at St. Raphael's Hospital. Well, I went to uh, New Haven Night School and took up sign language as a hobby, and then I went to NYU for interpreter training. And Deidre's hobby has turned into a rewarding career. Dana and Stephen met two years ago at Northwestern Community College in Winstead. Stephen's working in North Haven, and Dana's taking time out from her studies to raise a child with very special parents. David Henry, Action News 8, New Haven. What a wonderful story. Good luck to uh, the new parents. Hands Across America is not coming through Connecticut this weekend, but that is not stopping people here from forming a few links of their own. The giant human chain is expected to extend from coast to coast this Sunday, with the line sharing uh, through some 500 cities in 17 states. In all, organizers hope to raise $50 million to alleviate hunger in the U.S. Each volunteer is being asked to donate at least $10. And even though Connecticut isn't officially on the route, people from Waterford to Wolcott are joining hands just the same. In some cases, it'll be just a few people in a nursing home in West Haven. But in Fairfield, organizers are hoping to have 1,000 students and teachers all link up. All of this uh, hand-holding is scheduled for 3 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Hands across America. What a, what a great event this is. Uh, hmm. Gives me chills to think about. Well, if you have a toddler around the house, our next report could be a vital precaution. As Dr. Dean Adele reports, there's a hazard in our lives that is too often overlooked. Today's toys, watches, and calculators have become marvels of miniaturization with complex circuitry and tiny power supplies. But the power supplies, the button batteries, have become an unexpected hazard to children. Medical journals are filled with reports of toddlers swallowing those bright buttons, and as this x-ray shows, they can become lodged in the esophagus. And because they are batteries complete with battery acid, they can actually burn a hole in a child's esophagus. And now, there's a report warning of a new problem with these batteries batteries getting stuck in children's ears and noses. The results can be serious. The cost of chemicals in the battery can actually burn skin away, expose bone, and cause hearing loss and nerve paralysis. Unsuspecting parents and doctors often make things worse by using ear drops or nose drops, which only cause more corrosion. Also, this is not just a danger to kids. It could be a potential problem for any age. For instance, hearing aid batteries can accidentally lodge in someone's ear. Also, while we're on the subject of hazards to children, what's the first thing that a kid will do when they pick up something? You guessed it, it goes right into their mouth. Well, that could be a problem in certain circumstances. 95% of all choking deaths occur in children under the age of five. So how do you know if a toy you've bought for your child is safe or not? Well, here's a little gadget that just came on the market. It's made by the Toys to Grow On Company. Maybe you've seen this. Either way, I think it's a good idea, and you ought to know about it. What you do is you take this little plastic cylinder, you put a toy in it. If the toy sticks above the top edge, the toy is safe. But if the toy falls below the top edge, the toy is not safe. Now, if you like one of these, they cost a dollar. You write me a letter, I'll tell you where to send your dollar. This could save your child's life. I'm Dr. Dean Adele. And on Monday, Dr. Dean reports on hard water and a long life. That was quite some gadget he was showing. It was. Uh, there is one less coaching vacancy in the pro basketball ranks tonight, Bob. Yeah, the vacancy didn't exist too long. We'll hear from the new bench boss in Chicago. We'll also hear from a father and son team competing in Sunday's Indy 500 and tell you about a big weekend of racing locally at Lime Rock. All of the sports, if you keep it where it is. Volotion, it means Cadillac Pontiac. Volotion is the name. Now, the 
number one Cadillac Pontiac dealer in Connecticut makes this offer. You buy any new or used car from Volotion. Return it in the same condition within two days or 200 miles, whichever comes first, for any reason. And get all your money back. No questions asked. See Volotion off the Merritt Parkway. Look for the dome. Recently, the people of Bracciano, Italy, were asked to taste some very special Italian pies. They weren't baked by someone's grandmother, or even a famous chef. They were made by Pizza Hut. We call our Italian pies Priazzo. And now that the people of Bracciano have experienced them, we invite you to do the same. Wawa doesn't just make a hoagie. Wawa builds a hoagie. It's a symphony for your mouth. The hoagie from Wawa. Stan's my best friend. Oh, he's a great father and husband, but what I really love about him after 30 years is that he's my best friend. He's always wanted one of those little speedboats. Somehow I'm going to get it for him. I'll take out a loan, but he's going to have that boat. I mean, what are best friends for anyway? People's Bank, we hear you. We have the loan you're looking for. See the parade of prizes during the GMC Truck Great Escape Sweepstakes. But you have to enter to win. This is not only a big racing weekend in Indiana, it's a big weekend right here in Connecticut for racing, too. Mm -hmm. And it was nice of Jeff to take care of get the rain out of, out of there early in the week, don't you think? I think it was. Jeff's yes. a nice guy. <laughs> he really Despite is. what everyone says. It's a Connecticut tradition. Three days of sun and fun at Lime Rock. Another big, uh, big holiday weekend of racing gets underway tomorrow. But Ronnie Duncan tells us the main event is set for Monday. You know, the sport of auto racing is brought to life throughout this state every year at Lime Rock. The environment is one of speed, sound, and excitement. Now, Monday will be a day to remember here at Lime Rock because you're talking about the Campbell GTP Series. And when you talk about life in the fast lane, you talk about the main event. Last year, the Grand Prix was won by Bridgewater's Drake Olson, who teamed with Bob Dyson. They were able to hold off the favorite in the veterans, Brian Redman and Hurley Haywood. So you know the second time around for the homeboys would be just as sweet. But yeah, that wouldn't hurt at all. It'd be nice to, uh, to win it again. I'd say we're in uh, pretty good shape to do that. However, Redman and Haywood, who came in second, have put together a challenge on the track. A little bit of practice runs, they recorded a blistering time of 49.145, which amounts to 111 miles per hour on the mile and a half track at Lime Rock. Lime Rock's been a nice track for me, and our Group 44 Jaguars are performing very well here this morning, much better than we have in the past. So let's start off our engines for this one, good buddy. It's going to be a stone gas. Ronnie Duncan, Action News 8, Lime Rock. And, of course, on Sunday, the eyes of the racing world will be on the famed Brickyard, the 70th Indianapolis 500. 69 Indy winner Mario Andretti lost his number one car in this crash. He'll start now from the back row. His son, Michael, will also be competing, one of two father-son teams. The answers are the others. So, is it time for a changing of the guard at Indy? They always change. I think if you look at the past, you know, you always have new names popping up and the older ones retiring. You know, it's just the way life it is. It's a cycle of time. It's a natural evolution. I think you, you're going to see just uh, the young set coming on, and uh, uh, we're not ready to be pushed aside yet. But, uh, but uh, I think uh, we'll just try to delay the change of the guard as long as we can. Live coverage of the Indy 500 begins Sunday at 11 a.m. here on Channel 8. This afternoon at the NCAA Division III Baseball Regionals in Ithaca, New York, Eastern Connecticut stayed alive by beating Oswego State, then North Adams, and the Eastern Warriors now advance to the championship round tomorrow, and that'll be against Ithaca College. Meanwhile, in the NCAA Division II World Series, the University of New Haven Chargers uh, left today for Montgomery, Alabama, where they will compete beginning tomorrow at 9 p.m. against Columbus. The Chargers are 30-3, and three, making their eighth trip to the Nationals in 10 years. Our consistency wins it. The team's been consistent all year. We've been hitting the ball well, playing good defense. That's what's pulled us through. 
we're going to have to go out and take everybody the way we can. We can't go out and pound everybody. So we're just going to have to stay in the ball game, stay close, and we can pull it out. Wallen's home run helped beat LeMoyne in the regional finals on Tuesday in Syracuse. UNH is 30-3, and entering the World Series. This afternoon of the National League, one game in progress. The Cubs, in the eighth inning, playing at home, lead Houston. On tonight's schedule, the Mets, who lead the National League East by four, will play in San Diego. The Red Sox begin a weekend series of the Rangers in Texas. The Sox lead the American League East by a game and a half over the Yankees, who host the Angels tonight in New York. California ready Don Sutton looking for career win number 298. In NBA news, the Chicago Bulls today hired former 76ers standout Doug Collins as their new head coach. You know, first of all, I'm an Illinois kid. I went to school at Illinois State, which is like 125 miles from here. Uh, I grew up watching the Bulls. My lifetime uh, hero was Jerry Sloan, and uh, you know, I just think it's a great opportunity. I Collins was an outstanding guard for Philadelphia before a chronic foot ailment forced him to retire. The NBA Championship Series gets underway Monday at 3 p.m. where the Celtics host the Rockets in Boston. Houston was mighty impressive in, in eliminating the Lakers in five after losing the opener. It's tough to beat the Lakers for a straight, especially when you beat them two at their place. And so they're playing very well. We, you know, I, I'm not really sure what to expect, but I really, we really haven't gotten over what they're going to do offensively and what they do, what they do defensively. But I anticipate they're going to come out with the same type of game plan they had against L.A., clog up the middle, try to use the big guys. Uh, of course, McHale and Parrish and Walton give the Celtics uh, just a few big guys, too. The Flames and Canadiens each fined $21,000 today for last night's disgraceful bench-clearing brawl at the conclusion of Game 4 of the Stanley Cup Finals. It took 15 minutes to restore order. Now, as for the game, classic defensive struggle. Claude Nabu stealing a Doug Rice Row clearing attempt, beating goaltender Mike Vernon to score the only goal with 8.50 left, giving the Canadiens a 3-1 game lead. This is a game that we could not lose. We, uh... You know, that before the, it was just intense in the dressing room before the game. If we lost this game, we knew that they were back in it. And, uh, and let's, let's face it, why play those extra games when you have to? The Canadiens can wrap up their 23rd Stanley Cup with a win tomorrow night in Calgary. Marlins Starlings manager Donald Bauer says a protest of the outcome of last Sunday's title fight will be heard next Wednesday. Now, the Hartford welterweight lost his U.S. Boxing Association crown to Johnny Bumpus. There was a headbutt in the sixth round, which was ruled accidental. Bumpus was cut and could not continue. USBA rules state that the winner on points will be awarded the bout. Bumpus was declared the winner, but Bowers claims that Bumpus's corner made the cut even worse, preventing the fight from continuing. He wants a no decision, and the title returned to Marlon Starling. The upshot of it all is there eventually will be a rematch. Hopefully, Mucci can beat him next time, and he'll get the title back. But don't expect the outcome to be reversed. Right. You said that doesn't happen very it, often. It just doesn't, you know, they're afraid about setting a precedent. They want to, that when you go home at the end of the game, at the end of the fight, they don't want the outcome to be changed by something that doesn't actually take place right. in the ring. So the Indy will be on uh, live TV? This yeah, and it's yeah. the first time ever. Pretty excited about that. Why Usually, is it taking so long? Greg? Well, because the people at Indianapolis, for some reason, haven't wanted to do it live. I don't know why, because they're, they're going to get 250,000 sure. people there, whether it's on live well, TV Well, I or think not. they're maybe afraid that people won't show up at the track well, if they can see it on TV. that will never happen. I don't think so either. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> the man who said he preferred the sea to Hollywood actor Sterling Hayden, he used to live in Wilton, Connecticut. He is dead tonight. During his career, Hayden appeared in 51 major films, including Dr. Strangelove and The Godfather. But his first major acting role came in 1950 when he starred in the classic film, The Asphalt Jungle. Hayden also was a member of the Merchant Marine. In fact, he alternated between movie parts and ocean voyages. The 70-year-old actor died peacefully in his home in Sausalito, California, in his sleep. Still to come here on Action News tonight, a consumer's telegraph money order gets lost on its way to Mexico. And it takes our man Bogey to help track down the cash. Mike joins us live next. Hey, Dave! Oh, no. <laughs> I changed my whole restaurant. I'm now selling celery on the stick. <laughs> it's so light, you can't even taste it. But Earl, light is right, but taste makes it better. Like friendly pita pockets, for sauce sandwiches, and salads made fresh for you. Oh, I'm one hungry piece of celery. <laughs> then what you need is one of Friendly's lighter meals. Fresh, delicious, and light. Think you'll notice if I come back tonight? Friendly has a flavor. Friendly has a flavor. On its own. Dodge Boys, sell me some fun. No problem. Because right now, the Dodge Boys have 6 8 on a huge inventory of Ram Tough 2 and 4 wheel drive Ram 50s. Ram Tough. 6 8 financing on Ram 50, Ram 50 Sport, and Power Ram 50 SS. For work or play, these rugged imports can't be beat. Yeah. So see your Dodge Boys now for 6 8 on Ram 50s, all ready for immediate delivery. Dodge Boys have no fault. They do. Ooh, right up here, sit up, pop, 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 pop it up.
brand names for less at Marshall's. Famous maker swimwear, comparable in quality at $34. Marshall's price, $14.99. Choose from a great selection. Call for the store nearest you. He's suing Toby Moffat is going to court to overturn this week's delegate election results in both Southington and Waterbury. A recount is scheduled tomorrow in Waterbury because the final count was so close between him and Governor O'Neill, just a 48-vote difference. At first, you'll recall Moffat was told he had won, and then a half hour later, word from the registrar that there had been a counting error and the governor won. In Southington, Moffat is complaining that because of a voting machine malfunction at one polling place, voters were told to come back later. Moffitt says state law requires that a backup machine be available or that voters be offered paper ballots. Moffitt lost Southington by just 60 votes. Last night on Action News, we showed you a beautiful new mural which adorns the rear wall of a New Haven bank. But we made a mistake when we told you the name of the bank. The mural was painted for the Connecticut Savings Bank. And if you'd like to give your eyes a treat, head over to the bank's main office on Church Street in New Haven. The mural is by Robert Gollum, who says he just couldn't resist the chance to tackle that large wall. Gollum has created other artworks for the bank, including a huge steel structure in the bank's lobby. That's magnificent. On Wall Street today, what kind of a day was it? The stock market staged another strong performance. The Dow Jones Industrials shooting up by nearly 17 points. It's now at 1823.29, closing out the week. Volume on the big board today, more than 130 million shares. Heavy trading, Janet. Well, tonight our man Bogey takes on Western Union. He gets to the bottom of the case of the missing mail order. Bogey? The missing mail order. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great? Sounds like a Perry Mason. I know. <laughs> Thousands of people depend on Western Union every day for telegrams and money orders. And when they get lost, it could mean big trouble. And that was certainly the case for an East Haven woman who came up to me for help finding her lost money order. Last December, Ellen Latoro's son here on the right took a trip to Acapulco, Mexico. But while he was there, his wallet was stolen, which put him in a tight spot with his hotel bill. To cover that expense, Ellen sent him a $200 money order to Western Union. The problem? That money never arrived. Because the money was not delivered in time, he had to leave jewelry there in order to satisfy the balance of the bill in order to leave the hotel. Nine days after she sent the money to the Hotel Americana in New York City, where it was to be sent on to the same hotel chain in Acapulco, executives called her to say it had arrived. What Ellen wanted to know is why it took so long. So consequently, I in turn got back to Western Union and I said, you know, why nine days? to New York City from East Haven, Connecticut. Well, we don't know. We're checking on it. And this was a proverbial passing of the buck for about two and a half months until I contacted you. I got in touch with Western Union's district manager in Hartford, and here's what he told me about this problem. In this case, it looks like there was a slight communications breakdown where um, we passed the complaint on to New York. New York thought it was closed. Evidently, somebody put it in the wrong pile. It wasn't handled, and as a result, it did take too long. Oh, much too long. I'd hate to be staying there waiting for my money. Now, if you have a consumer complaint and it gets all bogged up and you can't get any action, sit on and write me a letter, and I'll go to work for you. Simple as that. Make sure you give me all the information. I'm Mike Bogoslowski, and I'm your corner. So you're getting weighed in in West Haven tomorrow? Yeah. No, no, tomorrow I'm getting weighed in at North Haven. Oh, North, North Haven. Haven. Not, Not West, West Haven. Haven. North Haven. North Haven. North Haven. Right. All right. Do you think you're going to do well? I'm going to do fine. Uh, Good. Uh, we'll see. We hope so. Thanks. Up next, on action, <laughs> up next on Action News, Jeff Fox will be in with the Memorial Day weather outlook. And a million pennies for Lady Liberty. We'll have that story next. On most sports sedans, you'd expect clean design. You'd also expect the performance of gas-filled struts and shocks, sport suspension, front drive, and six available multi-port injected cylinders. But on this sports sedan, you can expect something more not found on any sports sedan. A huge trunk. A wagon, you say. Half sports sedan, half trunk, we say. Celebrity Eurosport. Drive today's Chevy. Live today's Chevy.
nearly a century ago on Saturday mornings. The good people of Boston took their beans to Friends Bakery to be baked all day in brick ovens. In the evening, they picked them up. Are you here for your beans? It wasn't long before the Friends Bakery knew more about baked beans than just about anyone. And today, the people at Friends are a hundred years smarter than that. Nobody knows more about baked beans than Friends. The day you moved into your home, you began building equity. Real money. Money folks are using for good things, like college tuitions, with Connecticut Savings Bank Instant Equity Credit. Up to $50,000, there when you need it. And free, with no fees, no points, no charges. Ask about Instant Equity Credit. We're Connecticut Savings Bank. We believe in you. Here's the lowest annual percentage rate financing ever in the history of GMAC. Low GMAC 5.9% financing on new GMC S15 pickup trucks. Tough construction, a 2.5 liter engine, and 5.9%. Plus, you could win trips, boats, GMC trucks, and more in the GMC Truck Great Escape Sweepstakes. And check out the GMC S15 pickup trucks with 5.9%. Length of finance contract is limited. See your GMC truck dealer now. When customers want service, they'll go to any length to get it. Make it easy with a toll-free 800 number. Call us. We can help. Southern New England Telephone. And here's some stories we're getting ready for Action News Late Edition at 11. Holiday speeders, watch out. The men in blue are looking for you. We'll have a complete traffic update at 11. And we'll tell you how Connecticut residents are having holiday fun in the sun and why some say cramp campsites could mean crazier times. We'll have those stories plus all the latest national news tonight at 11 on Action News Late Edition. Hope you'll join us. And the state police aren't the only ones with their radar working tonight. Huh, Jeff? No, I have my radar turned on right now. Right. In fact, we'll uh, look at it in just a second. There are some thunderstorms throughout the state. Let's take a look at what National Weather Service radar from Soapstone Mountain sees. Now, we've got some ground clutter, but in the northern portion of the state and then into Massachusetts, looks like there are some showers around. Bridgeport is reporting a shower at this hour. Also, some things to the east of uh, Providence in Rhode Island and in the Hudson Valley of New York. And also, looks like some fairly good-sized boomers up in the northwest hills. So we will leave in a chance of some uh, showers throughout the course of the night, some thunderstorms, 52 to 57 for low, light and variable winds. Then for tomorrow, clouds and some sun, risk of a shower, 70 to 75. And on Sunday, again, a combination of clouds and sun with a slight risk of a shower, 70 to 75. If you're looking for a place to go on the weekend, try and stay west, not east. Uh, clouds and sun on Memorial Day, partly sunny Tuesday and Wednesday. Temperatures remaining in the 70s. West, not east not this east. weekend. Okay, thanks, right. Jeff. You have trouble picturing what a million of anything looks like? Well, let me show you what a million pennies looks like. That's what it looks like. $10,000 worth of pennies are going to benefit the Statue of Liberty restoration. All this money was raised by students, merchants, and residents in the Enfield area. The project, the brainchild of John F. Kennedy Junior High School math teacher, Arthur Hosa, who had a lot of help from his students. Uh, I took a lot of the mo extra money I had left from lunch at every day, and then I just, um, pile it up after so many days and it really counted up. Uh, it would be interesting to see how many people still use the common, uh, gee, I got a million things to do or you gave me a million math problems last night to do. Uh, they have to realize and then when you take a look at it that a million's an awful lot. I think we got the names of our characters reversed there, but right now these pennies are on display in <laughs> an eight by four one foot deep plexiglass box at the school library in Enfield. Sometime in June, the 6,400 pound donation is going to be cashed in at the bank and then they'll send a check off to the Statue of Liberty restoration. A million pounds. Oh, I don't think I'd want to have to count those. Thanks for being with us. Hope you'll join us again tonight at 11. If you're driving, please be careful. Don't forget to buckle up. Good night. Have a nice weekend. Daughters and sons.